plowed and I'll do a QuickTime recording too. Now let's see about the audio for QuickTime. Okay, I should be all right. Hello. Yes, it's getting audio. Okie dokie. So we did Big John last time, eh? Yeah, great old tune. How are people getting along with that? Is, is, are people able to play it? Got some of it? Yeah, that's, that's all right. It's all right. Um, okay, well, why don't we start with that? Why don't we start with our nice A major scale, get it nicely in tune and all that. And then we'll, then we'll start practicing Big John. Okay, I'm going to check my fiddle because been playing a lot today and I might have beat it up a little bit. Glad I checked. Okay. Get that A ready there, guys. Nice and comfy. Do a couple of drop downs if you need to. Make sure she's comfy. Okay, here we go. Up the scale. Ready? And. Let's do the arpeggio while we're at it, okay? Ready, here we go. That's working pretty good. I want to try something there, guys. Since many people are kind of working on trying to get things up to tempo and getting the right arm a little freer and feeling more confident, let's up the game a little bit. Let's do the scale followed by the arpeggio faster. Okay? Now, don't do a huge amount of tuning when we do this. I want you to listen to yourself and see where your first attempts keep landing for the notes. See if you're always flat or you're always sharp, and then we'll see if we can make a change so that your first attempts are more in line, okay? So let's do it a little faster, and do, don't do a huge amount of tuning. Just try to pay attention. Okay, A major, a little faster. A one, two, and go. comments about it did you surprise yourself now I'll tell you about my experience here where it's staring at my tuner when we went fast there I had two notes that I fixed and they were both flat okay how about somebody else anybody notice a tendency in themselves what's your tendency Deborah Flatsville Flatsville USA <laughs> 
So that's really easy to fix. That's the good thing. You know, the flatness is easy to fix. You just got to press harder with your finger. You come right up there almost instantaneously. All right. How about somebody else? What about you, Susan? Which way for you? Susan, uh, uh, Susan, uh, Dr. Susan. Although Sue Leader could be a doctor too, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have the faster we go, the harder it is to make the interval between the first and third finger on the on the G string. Oh yeah, and yeah. what do you find? You're always what? Um, uh, the the C sharp is if I'm on the C sharp, then my my um, first finger, my A is too high. Comes up, yeah. So after you're finished C sharp try to kind of launch yourself back towards the scroll of the fiddle. Okay, you might, you might have to make a desperate move. Many people have this problem with the reaching of the keys where everything comes up, the whole hand comes up and it's hard to get it back, back to home base. One thing I've noticed about that over the Zoom though, cause it's kind of, I can really kind of look uh, is that relaxing seems to put you back home and the effort is what puts you up here. Remember that effort I was talking about with the thumb, that kind of squeezing? That gets you up, and so relaxing can get you back, okay? And the exhale, that's what I'm always talking about. Or just launch it. Just go like, you know, just go, Ugh! <laughs> if you can. For some people, you have to do that. Your hand is small or not used to the C sharp, and you just come up, so you just got to blast back, okay? How about somebody else? What about Susan Leader? How about you? Yeah, uh, that C sharp is a tough one to get. C sharp is is hard. Uh, the yeah. G sharp is, is a little bit easier. And which way were you with the C sharp? Uh, flat. Flat. That's Phil. So, and it's hard to put more pressure on that C sharp. That's the problem because it's like trying to press a button with a two by four. It's long yeah. and it's kind of unwieldy, you know. But try it. So if you're all if it's really flat, just push down really hard. For me to get C sharp in tune, I'm totally flat fingered and I use this hard part of my corner of my finger, the outside corner of my finger. And if I don't, I'm, I'm flat. Okay, so see if you can make a change like that. How about uh, Stacy? Totally flat. Oh, really? Like I'm always my kind of key, yeah, towards flat. And I just, I'm, my ear is getting a little bit better. Thank merciful yep. heavens, but uh, I'll usually run flat. Now, here's a little but trick to tunable. If you're working on your ear, which sounds like you're working on your ear, you, with tunable, yeah. uh, and if you're using tunable, you can play a drone. Yeah. Oh, good. So, you know what? Next time you're playing, especially the arpeggio, hit the sustain button, play the low A which is octave uh, 3A. Yep, there it goes. Let's turn it up here. There it is. Play the C sharp and the, and the E. You hearing that? So yeah. that's the A major arpeggio there. So that means your ear has something to hold on to. See that? making sense yeah it does yeah because it's really the best way these even even to this day is to hear the note and match the note you know yeah. uh, and, but the problem is you need somebody to play the notes but these drones are great my wife used yeah. to use these drones they sounded kind of like i don't know like chinese music or something like that and they were specifically designed to play all the overtones of the of the arpeggio notes that she was droning so your ear can grab onto them you know they're very very useful so see if that helps sure yeah, yeah. playing yeah. with you helps like i find sure. when i play with you i can i can match with my ear okay, too good. so that means you can always go back to the recording from the previous yeah. class and just practice along with those yeah. scales that's great to hear you're doing that now okay mm -hmm. anybody else want to tell me how they how they are and how they want to be with the C major, or sorry, uh, A major with the C sharp. Biv? Um, it's not too bad going up, coming down. My um, G sharp, my G is really sharp. Oh, uh, really sharp? My G is really sharp. 
Okay, so that could be a little bit of what I call overcompensation. Yeah. You know, in the key of A with all those stretch notes, you know you have to stretch, and sometimes you jump the gun. Yeah, I think that's so. Fair. One thing, one way to keep that from happening is to first of all try to keep your hand back all the way, like I was talking about before, with the relaxing, you know, and then just try, the next time you get it in tune, just kind of take a look at the gap between uh, the the three things there. And just try to take a visual note of it. You know, you wouldn't you wouldn't believe what that does for you. Even though you can't really see those gaps, you still kind of register it somehow. Okay. 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 And I have a question. What was what was that program you were using? Tunable. It's called Tunable. Looks like this. And what does that do? Like what? It's a tuner. Oh, okay. And it's for your phone, uh, and it's it's tunable without the e, so tunable. For some reason, I don't know why. But uh, anyway, it's really good for practicing. I love it for practicing. At a glance, I can just kind of keep an eye on myself and train my ear. And that's the big thing. That's why it's so good to use the tuner. Because the tuner tells you when you think, when your ear thinks you're in tune and you look at the tuner and it's agreeing, that is such a huge leap forward for your ear. It's like, it makes your ear way more sure of yourself. So, but like I said, it's good to just glance at it and get that reward, you know? Just to, if you stare at it too much, it can become uh, worse than not having one. It's a metronome too. It's also a metronome, yeah. And I'm not gonna, I'm not, I wasn't gonna tell you guys about this, but it has this little record function. Okay, so you hit the record function, you play your scale or your arpeggio, and then it gives you a, a grade, a percentage. And the first time I tried to use it, I was do, trying to make a video about how to use your tuner, right? And I went through all the aspects of using the tuner. And then I said, and it was just when the record function just came out, it was an update. And I was like, and they just added this recording feature. Check this out. And I hit the button and I played my, I can't remember what scale, and I got 85. And I was like, oh God. <laughs> So anyway, it's a little bit exacting, but it is, you know, it can be a good way, again, to just keep your eye on things. It also has different settings, intermediate, beginner, advanced. That can really help, too. If you're trying to get into the ballpark, that intermediate setting is really helpful. Okay, it's more forgiving. Anyway, enough talk. Let's do it again. <laughs> Okay, so remember your tendencies there, guys, and let's see if we can attack them. Ready, scale. Keep working on it. What what went wrong there, Deborah? No, I did the scale. Actually, I was quite happy with my scale, okay. but then you started into the arpeggio and I missed it. Mm. Okay, <laughs> Let's do the arpeggio once more. It won't hurt anybody. Yes, Susan. I got a sixty-two. <laughs> okay, hey, <laughs> you passed. I got a I got a pity sixty-two at a philosophy course once, so I was I was pretty happy about that. Two no. storms. <laughs> okay, let's try the arpeggio once more there. Ready, two, three, and... Uh. Shall we give Big John a try? 
Let's do it. So let's play it like a good three times. Now, I can't remember what tempo we had it to there last Thursday, like how fast we were getting it. But let's start slow. Okay, slow and steady. We'll do it, say, three times, and I'll see if I can push the tempo every time. Okay, and we'll see what happens. Okay. A one, two, three, and... Susan, how'd you do it the first two times? Susan Leader. Uh, so I didn't get much practice of this song in this week. So I was kind of out. I was out from the start. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. 
Oh, okay, that's all right. We'll keep turning. We'll keep practicing. Yeah. Don't worry. Yeah. Uh, who else? Who? Anybody have trouble? Couldn't do it. Couldn't keep up. Deborah, what happened to you? Long day on the computer. A lot of construction stuff in my house going wrong today. So my concentration isn't there tonight. Oh. I hear you, man. I, I just have lots of things on my mind. I'm trying to concentrate. I, I got half of it, but I think, you know, a little practice would have helped too, but there's a lot to practice between <laughs> Wednesday night and Thursday night, right? Well, you know what I always say? There's somebody asked me one time, how do you get to be a great fiddle player? And I say, well, you got to give up everything, you know, like basically like live on the road for about a decade. <laughs> Anyway, that's okay. We'll keep practicing it. Now, who had some success? Who was successful with Big John? Susan. Great I, on. I'm successful with the second part. Part B is fabulous. It just flies. And then I find myself speeding up and I get back to part one and it's like, hmm. Oh, you're speeding up. Okay. Now, do you know how to battle speeding up? Have I told you about how to battle speeding up? It's the length of your bow. You try to use as much bow as when you start right through. That's the that's the way to get yourself steady with the time. So, and in, in, in fact, in the Suzuki uh, method of teaching, they put tape on the kids' bows. They put one piece here, one piece here, and one in the middle. And they tell the kids right from day one, here's your, well, for them, here's your half note, here's your quarter note. See that? All the time. And for us, for fiddle players, here's your quarter note, Here's your eighth note all the time. And you try to use the consistent amount of bow when you're like, even when you're going faster, I'm always trying to use more bow all the time when I'm going faster, right? And if you use that consistent amount of bow all the time, then it should keep you steady. Okay, that's the biggest culprit of speeding up, starting to cut off notes short. Who else? Who had good success? Kalina, did you get through it? Um, yeah, I did, but I think I need to practice like going from the high, like the C sharp, and then like bringing my hand back like fast yeah. enough for the B because that, yeah, and then my B is like sharp. Okay, well, we can work on that. So th that's great that you noticed that. That's the most important thing. Now, I have t told you guys about moving from string to string like this, right? This is the way you move from string to string. So not like this, but like this. Okay, that'll make it a bit quicker as well. How about you, Stacy? You get along okay? Hi. Um, my experience was similar to that of Deborah and Susan. Just not enough time to practice, and like I'm getting over a pretty bad illness, so I'm still not oh, back no. to. But I had more success with the B part this time, so that Hi. that's a win. That's good. Hey, I got to tell you a funny thing. Uh, the beginner class on Tuesday night, there's another Stacy in that class, different mm -hmm. Stacy. And when, when her screen came on, it said Stacy. And I said to everybody, I got to let a goat farmer in. And then I clicked it and it was not you. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be so confused. They looked at me a little funny, I have to say. Anyway. Yeah, not too many of us goat farmers. Yeah, that's I, right. I love, that's your, right. I love your goat blanket. That's really cute. My what? Goat blanket oh, behind you. Oh yeah, I didn't even know that was back there. Yeah, it's a, it's a quilt. Actually, it was a gift from my mother-in-law. Cool. So, yeah. Okay, now how about Simone and Diana? Thanks for the email today, Diana. I'm glad you're getting along so good. Now, how how are you guys doing with that tune? Um, you know, it's coming along. Um, you know, my mom said that the second half is also better. And I, I actually, I think I find for some reason I remember the first part a bit better, but yep. I'm way out of tune on the, the G string, I think. So. Okay, so this here is going to help with that too. Mm -hmm. Getting the whole unit over. That's what that's what will keep you in tune down on the low string. Okay. okay, let's do it again, guys. Bev, you got along okay? I forgot to check in. Yeah, okay. So let's get a lot. Let's do it again. And let's just do it. We won't try to speed it up. This is just going to be a grinding. Okay. Now I got to see what happened to uh, who was who was it? Sorry. Oh, that was yeah. Did we lose somebody? Felt like we lost somebody. Who was who did we lose? I'm forgetting about. 
I think. Melanie. Melanie. Yeah, what happened to Melanie? I'm going to send her an invite. She might, might, might have got kicked off or something. Somebody had a dog emergency. That was that was Diana and Simone, but they they recovered from that dog emergency. Oh yeah, they. <laughs> okay, let's try it again, guys. Slow. We'll stick to the slow. I think it's working out. One, two, three, slow. <laughs> One sec, got to let Melanie in. Well, she'll miss all the practice. Okay, second time around the A. Ready and. successful everybody's bows were going that time is better so I kind of think that it might be nice to make this kind of a goal tune over the course of our 
classes together, we can keep checking in with it. Because like I said at the beginning, it, it is a challenging tune. Like it's simple. All it is is a scale and an arpeggio. But the key and the fact that it goes all over the fiddle are challenging. And so we can keep working on it to the, get those kind of skills better for all the other stuff we're going to learn. Okay. So we'll keep working on Big John right through our whole our whole time together having classes okay until it's like the strongest tune you have all right any comments or questions or anything at all about uh about big john i wouldn't mind trying trying it again but if any yes yes stacy hey um for the second you know the second part the part b that ending there the the high part i'm doing something squirrely there want to play it for me and we'll see what you're doing Sure, yeah, like, you know where it says ending one? Like, from there. Let's see. Okay. But you, I think you do something else that I don't do. Am I missing something? Yeah, I go right down the scale. What you're doing, I, I, I thought I was doing it right, uh, well, the way it was written in the music. Yeah. Button. So it, you're do doing better. fine. You're doing fine. Now, what, what I'm doing there is uh oh sorry melanie computer crash i don't you hate that my computer's hanging on by a thread man i think coal smoke came out of it the other day <laughs> uh, anyway uh so you're doing great there you're doing what's written and it sounds fine the only thing that was not quite fine about it was the g sharp and c sharp but you can just keep yeah. practicing those well, yeah press down with them as hard as you can there stacy okay okay yeah. that should do it you're almost there you're very close I like your way better though, like the way you're oh, yeah. playing. So the better. way I'm doing it is a straight scale down with one jog. That's it. Okay, so straight down okay. from A. And then we back up one note and keep going down. See that? You want to try it? Uh, okay. So you go like so. right yes that's right okay i'm gonna do it that way from now on okay cool now also when you're going down this is for everybody when you're going down across all those four strings remember to try to do this rather than this okay that's going to help a lot too so try to do this over there watch me do it See how my hand goes first and my arm kind of follows a little bit. See that? So that's going to give you way more precise results. All right. Anybody else have any bits or pieces? Yes, Deborah. I think the second ending you're playing differently as well. It sounds like you're going down the scale on the second ending as well. Probably. Okay. So, it, but it, it still blends. Yeah, it still blends. Yeah. You mean like that? It's the same, basically the same as what I showed uh, Stacy. Or that's what it is there. Okay, that's what I'm doing. Same, same idea as what I showed Stacy. It it should end on an A. Yeah, it is on an ending on an A. Okay. Oh. That's a high A. Okay. All right. All right, let's do it one more. Yes, Susan, yes. Anybody. The, hard, the hardest thing for my for the whole first section for me is when you get up into the open A is keeping my other fingers off that open string. Ah, yeah. So my trick for that is so what your fingers are on which string going from the e up to the a and all of a sudden i realize that my my that same finger is just is on the a string it's it's, like it's touching, a, it. touching it yeah yeah so for the e string to avoid that look where i put my fingers see that right off to the side that's the nice thing about the e is that you can kind of you can put your fingers kind of on the corner of the fingerboard 
You but don't go, have to get anywhere close to it. But go down to your um, G and your, when you're coming back up, so it's um, C, E, A, that's where I'm stuck. That's the, the A string or the um, open A is where I am buzzing. Sorry. Play it, play it for me. It's... Right there. Ah, oh, okay. So to do that, first of all, I do recommend that you keep your finger down. Watch, when you see me doing that tune. Did you see my first finger move through any of that? No. So I keep her down. And look where I put it. I put it between... I put it on the G and D string. See that? And then it's well out of the way of the A string. So I'm not even coming on top of the string like that. I'm going right over to the side for that reason. Okay? I'm always doing that because I do a lot of double stops. See that? So I'm always doing that. It's a good idea. You just get right out of the way. And I'm always putting my finger on two strings because half the time, just like this tune, it gives me a whole bunch of notes that I need. See all those notes that I didn't even have to move for. Okay. So a good habit to get into. Anybody else have anything they'd like to discuss about Big John before we try it once again? No? Let's blast away. Okay. One, two, three, go.
right, how we get along that time, guys? Pretty good? I tried to keep my first finger down the whole time. Yeah. And then at some point it started getting really hard <laughs> to do. I guess towards the second part, it kind of, it wanted to move, but I was trying to keep it down. Oh, well, it wouldn't do you any good to keep it down during the second part. No, 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 the second bar. Like, by oh, the time you get around, this second time around on the first bar. Oh, okay, but, yeah, yeah. But it is actually more efficient. It's so efficient and it, yeah. it helps. But at one point, I just felt like I was probably pushing too hard. Maybe, and you can experiment. You know, that's like, you you can play with that, see how much is too much and how much is just enough. And I, I go with just enough all the time. <laughs> well, I went with too, I was too much, but it was, yeah. it was good, I'm glad. Good. And the other good thing about it is that, you know, when you're repeating that low A and the E all the time, it's exactly the same every time. It makes you sound stronger. So it's really good. Now, okay, that's Big John. And we'll keep checking in on Big John for sure. Now, let's think of something. Uh, did I have any suggestions last week? I couldn't remember today. I was doing online school with the kids all day and teaching down here, and I couldn't, re couldn't think Ms. of what Shepherd. we were talking about. Oh, we Miss Shepherd. That's right. Yeah. And then you were then we were going to do Miss Lyle and King George. Cool. Excellent. So did we learn Miss Shepherd? Yes. Oh, excellent. Okay. So let's try that then. And it's very it's going to be easier because it's A minor, so we don't have to do all that stretching. <laughs> Okay. Great. Miss Shepherd. That's great. And then we'll do the Miss Lyle. Yeah. Okay. So we'll practice Miss Shepherd a little bit here. Already. Two, three, and.
righty. That looked pretty confidently moving there. Anybody having serious problems? No? I'm here to help. <laughs> cool. Well, then we'll try it a little faster then, you know? The eventual tempo is going to be like this. Eventually. But for now, let's just kind of push it a little bit more. Why don't you take a little breather too? I actually am out of water. I'm going to go grab some water. And when I come back, we'll try it a little bit faster, okay? So limber up the, the left hand or the right hand, whatever you need to limber up. A few of these is really good. A few of these is really, really good. Very good. Oh, do like that. Be right back. Okay, how we doing? We refreshed? Let's do it. Miss Shepherd, tiny bit faster, and then we'll learn, uh, what do you call it there, King George. Okay, ready, two, here we go. So that was a little tiny bit faster. How do we do? Getting bits and pieces? Good. Okay. At this point, that's good. Because we'll keep at it. We'll keep practicing it. And we'll hopefully get more bits and pieces and link them all together. Okay? Anybody having anything they want to talk about with Miss Shepherd? No? Okay, well, let's think about King George then. Great tune, wicked tune. We haven't learned it yet, right? We're going to learn it tonight. 
Miss Lyle. We'll do Miss Lyle, but let's get King George first. Uh, it's a great tune, first of all, and uh, and it's at the beginning of the set. We'll put it at the beginning of the set since it's a Strasbourg. And uh, uh, it's simple and not that fast. <laughs> what, page, what page was it on in Sandy's book? I'll tell you right now, and I'll send a picture to people that don't have Sandy's book. Where's Sandy, where did Sandy's book go? It's page 62. Thank you. Oh, good. Oh, here it is here. Okay, page 62. King George set. Okay. It's amazing, man. This day and age is just incredible to me. And I'm going to take a picture of Miss Lyles. I'll take a picture of the whole page. We used to drive for a long time to pick up books because there were tunes in it that my dad wanted to get. When I think about what we went through now to get tunes, it's unbelievable. Okay, so we got Susan. Blazer, the other Susan. leader and we got Melanie and we got Simone. oh did I mute I didn't mute we got Bev and um, Calida and Stacy and uh, that Piper okay King George. Okay, everybody should have it as soon as it makes it back from the satellite. Now, while it's doing that, I will play King George for you a couple of times. Okay. Scottish like so much. So that's King George. Now, King George is a Strass Bay. Strass Bays are a little bit different than regular tunes because they have a few rhythmic figures going on. I call them sandwiches, and it has to do with the dots and the dashes that are on the notes when you're looking at them. They're called dotted rhythms. So that means that in the first bar of King George there, when you're looking at it, you can see that there's a dash on the E and a dot on both of those low A's and a dash on the B, okay? So that means that the E is a 16th note. The two low A's are both dotted eighth notes, so a little longer than an eighth note, and then a 16th note. So that sounds like this, short, long, long, short. See that, that's why I call it a long sandwich, because the long notes are in the middle and the short notes are on, on the outside like a sandwich, see that? Short, long, long, short. Just like that. Okay, that's how the rhythm goes there. And then you, the next little figure you have there is what I call the regular walking rhythm of the Strass Bay, which is long, short, long, short. See that? Okay, that's how that goes. And you run into that most of the time. 
Now let's see if I can find any short sandwiches in this tune. I don't know if there are any. We might be spared them. Yes, we are. So the only other thing we have is some short longs in the last couple of bars. See that where the long notes come after the short notes. Short long, short long, short long, short long. And that's how those rhythms work. So they seem really complicated when you're looking at them with the dots and the dashes, but they're very simple. They can only be really three ways. The long sandwich, the short sandwich, the walking rhythm. That's the mo what you see most of the time. Or you see these, the last one where the short note comes first. Short, long, short, long, short, long, short, long. But most of the time you see one of three. Long sandwich, short sandwich, or the long, short, long, short. Okay? So it's a way to kind of narrow it down without having to figure out every one. Now let's see if we can get that first phrase there, guys. I'm going to play it nice and slow. The pickup note that you'd be doing on an up bow is an A. Okay, then we got an E. And you can tell what I'm going to be doing here. I got one finger down on both the G and the D, and that's doing the work for me. So I'm going. Then we scale up. Scale back down. Back up to the A, and we kind of do it again. This time we scale down. Okay, that's how that first couple of bars goes there. So let's go really ultra slow and see if we can play those first couple of bars. Okay? Oh, oh my god. Fix my shoulder rest, maybe. That's better. Okay. Oh, no, not better. <laughs> Shoulder rests are finicky things. It takes a good long while to get them working right for you. Took me a good long while, that's for sure. Okay, here we go. One, two, three. Simone? Okay, let's do it again. Up bow on the A, and then we're going to clamp that first finger down on both the G and the D at the same time, okay? Let's give it a try. Open eight, ready? And. Sorry, E to A moves right after that. But let's do that again, just that much, okay? The, the A pickup and then E to A. Ready, and. bit okay one more time there guys and then we'll go on one two three So let's practice that second bar now, where we go up from the C. So E to A, ready, and. Or sorry, sorry, third bar. Third bar. Ready, and. Up the scale. Back to C. Now we got a B, D, G, E, and then this little rundown. is a connector note again. Now you see how that all works there, eh? I love that little rundown of 16th notes. That's a very, very Scottish thing to do. 
And then remember, when you add the 16th note that comes before that run, that's a 5 16th note run now. See that? Okay, so you want to make that all kind of one unit. And let me show you how I do it. <laughs> Scottish style, the last note of that run of 16th notes is a little longer. Do you hear that? And for those that want to get it really authentic, that would be a good idea to do that. So you go, instead of going, we go a little quicker and sharper, <laughs> like a ski and do. Okay, and that's how we do that part. Let's just try that last two bars again. So E to the A, and then we go up the scale, okay? Ready, and E, A, A, up we go. D, D, G, E, down we go. Let's do it again, just like that. E to A, ready, and. time. Hey, that wrist is looking real good there, Simone. I gotta say, I have a good shot of it and it's nice and flexible. That's what you want. Very good. Everybody getting that little rundown and everything there? Okay, let's start at the top of the part then. All right, let's see if we can blast right through till the end and see if anything goes wrong. Okay, what could go wrong? Here we go. A pickup note and then E to A. Ready? And try playing it for us so I can check in and see how you're doing anyone anyone yay Debbie well I, I might as well might as well I eh? always benefit from it good okay here it goes good first of all you're not doing any weird slurring which is really good because the strass bay is all about the single bow hey eh? did you notice that there's no there's not going to be very much slurring <laughs> because it's a very kind of detached style and so was I, I was choppy though right like i was it was choppy now to combat choppiness all you have to do is see about how your turnaround is. See if you can gentle up that turnaround a little bit. Try it. Try it. I, I, that, I'm having trouble when I'm going back to that note. Oh, what, 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 what. Hmm? That's a hard one. That's, you know, it's a string change. So you try to anticipate the string change. And it is only to the D. So all you actually have to do is this. The tip. Okay. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's going to just take practice. Yeah, and you know what's going to be good for you, Debbie? This is a great tune to practice that on, but watch this. See how I did that? To go back to the A, I stopped and I moved my bow over there using just my wrist and my hand as best I can and then continue on. See that? Because what's happening, the reason you're having trouble there is because you're moving your whole arm over and it's kind of crashing into that next string. It's way too much, yeah. right? Yeah, try to use two. Uh. That was better. That was cleaner. Okay. That's Small good though. Moved. Yeah. Anybody else want to play it? It's worth it. <laughs> what about Calida? You want to give it a go, Calida? Sure. Yay! Okay. Yeah, man. Great intonation, Calida. Really, really good. Right on. The only thing I would say is what I would always say, which is more bow. But don't worry too much about that because I'm going to get a sign made that says more bow that I step on so it lights up. Because I say I it to that. everybody that I teach, okay? So really, really good, okay? okay? And you're going to try with the 16th notes. You're also going to try it instead of it, 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 it. Okay. Very good. Who else? Brave Calida did it. Who else going to do it? Simone, you want to try it for us? I see you hiding in the shot there. You're like halfway hiding out of the shot. <laughs> good. Um, I'll try. Sure. Yeah. Now, the only thing you did wrong was you scaled up the first time. The second time you scaled up again, but it actually goes down. Okay. Okay. Try it again. One more time. Yeah, yeah I feel like I can't get that first rhythm. Sorry? I feel like the first rhythm I like can't hear something. Short, long. Yeah, short, long. It's weird. It's like long, short, long, long. <laughs> oh no! Yes, very good, very good. Okay, that's enough for me to say let's grind it. Okay, let's do it 300 times. And then we'll move on to the second part. All right. One, two, three. Second part. Now you might notice that the only difference between the first ending and the second ending of the first part is the very last note. 
<laughs> they did all that writing out just for one note. It's unbelievable, but it's the pickup note. So the first time around, you use a B to get back into the tune, right? The second time around, you use the high D to play the, as a pickup for the second part. See that? So that's how that works there. And I always like to include the pickup notes into the part that we're about to learn because it's really a pickup note is really an integral part of the of the B part. You know what I mean? Without it, it's kind of kind of tough. So that D is going to be our pickup note. And the first lick is going to have C sharps. See that? You hear all those C sharps? Okay. There was a girl, Jennifer was teaching a, a young girl on the tuba just before you guys came on. And, and she's kind of brand new at the tuba. And Jennifer's trying to explain to her how you read the notes on the music. And so she's saying, okay, show me which what the notes are. And the young one's going... C, B, F, B, F, C, F. Why are there so many Fs? <laughs> it cracked us up over here. My God, why are there so many Fs? Yes, girl. It came out. Finally, yay. Sylvia lost her tooth that's been hanging on by a thread for like a week. It's awesome. You want to come show everybody? Show everybody your tooth gone. Hooray! Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> it's been hurting. How her. much is oh, a tooth fairy worth? Two bucks these days. Two bucks. Two bucks. Zoe You're got twenty. Bucks. Zoe got twenty. Well, I don't know what Zoe's parents have to do with the tooth. She must have some special deal or something like that. God. Okay. So the B part. So we got C's. We got three C sharps there. So it's C, E, A, E. And if you look at this, very simple, a C major arpeggio, right? Really easy. So we got C and E, A and E, C and E again, and down we go. Okay, then we got C, E again. And then we got a G and a B there. And that's a very Scottish thing to go to that G natural. Okay, so let's see if we can put all that together. Really, really slow. So we'll play the D pickup note, and then we'll play C, E, A, E. Ready, go. Okay, let's do it again. Same thing. D and then C E A E. Ready? And C E A E C E. Down we go. C E A E. Down we go to the G. Okay, very good. One more time and then we'll move on. Get your D ready. Ready? And. Okay, how are we doing? We getting that? Cool. Then the next part, we got more C's and E's. See that? C, E, A, E, C, E, A. And then a big pickup note for this big scale. See that? Great big scale down from A there. Okay, that's how that part goes. And then we do it all again with a different ending. All right, so now let's see if we can get this second phrase. So we got C, E, A, E, C, E, A, E, and then the F sharp and the G, and then we come down the scale. So let's try it from those C's and E's. Ready, and C, E, A, E, C, E, down we go, C, Oh, wait, hold on. Did I start wrong place? 
Oh, sorry, I started at the wrong place. Okay, let's do it again. C and E. Ready? And C, E, A, E, C, E, A, F sharp, G, G, A, down we go. To the G. Okay, let's do that again. C to E. Ready to go. C, E, A, E, C, E, A, F sharp, G, G, A. You getting that? One more time there, guys. Ready to go. C, E, Good, that looked good. So now let's see if we can squish all that together with all these C's and E's. All right, so we'll play our D pickup note and then we'll start doing them. <laughs> okay, here we go. Ready and D C. And then we got an ending. Okay. Now, how did everybody do getting through that first phrase again? I sprung it on you, but I thought you were up for it for sure. Okay. Why don't we do all of that once more and then we'll get the ending. Okay. D pick up note and then there's C's and E's. One, two, three, one, two. Okay, now let's get this ending. It's probably the tricky, trickiest part of the tune. And it's just because it doesn't make any arpeggio, ar arpeggio sense, really. So we got C, E, B, D, A, B, E, A. And then this little scaly bit. We got G, A, G. And then the E, down we go. That's how that works there, okay? So let's see if we can get all those notes. So C, E, B, D, A, B, E, A. That's going to be the last two bars. Ready, and C, E, B, D, A, B, E, A, G, A, G, E, down we go. That B there at the very end, that's going to be a pickup note to start the tune or to go into another tune, okay? Yeah, that's always the way that works. That was pretty good, I think. Let's do it again. C, E, B, D. Ready, and... Just like that. Ready and yeah, are we getting that? Cool. Could we try going from one right from one end to the other of the B part? Okay, give a little shake. Yes, Melanie. So um 
the third bar in the last line, the C is flat, like the C. Natural. Is natural, sorry. Okay. Yeah. Now, it's so it, small in the script, it's hard to spell. Yes, and, and I don't know why they made natural signs and sharp signs look so much alike. Okay. They're, they're very hard to distinguish. They always have been, and I don't know why. Okay. But yeah, see, and the, if you think about the idea of the tune, though, the whole second part has that C ma or A major thing for, you know, all of a sudden, and then it resolves back to A minor, and that's why it does that, okay? Because it resolves back to the A minor key at the end. Okay, the whole B part, shall we? Okay. Nice D pickup. Ready? Try playing it for me. Maybe. Deborah, right on, man. I'll do it. Hey, yeah, hey, hey. Unless someone else wants to do it that hasn't tried it. Nope. Okay. <laughs> I get it. Okay. Great intonation, really good. And everything was great except the second last bar where the rhythm turns around and it goes short long, short long. Yeah, I was I I was trying <laughs> I was trying to get the notes at the same time trying to see. I didn't think I played them all correctly, but well you you played all the right notes, it's just that it changes in that bar, that one yeah. bar. So but don't worry, we'll practice it like five hundred times, yeah. so you'll get it by then, you know. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, very good, though. Very good. Good. Really good intonation. Anybody else want to give it a go? So was my wrist moving better? Did you notice? I, I think so. I think so. I didn't really notice, but I'll keep I, an eye. I'll keep an okay, eye. Okay, because I'm trying to be looser. I really like it's Simone, right? Yeah. Yes. Her wrist is beautiful. Yes, definitely. Nice wrist, Simone. <laughs> Everybody look at Simone. It's a good idea. Anybody else want to try it? Come on. Who are, Melanie's going to try it. Yay! <laughs> you asked for it. Yay!
Yes, very good, Melanie. Very good. You got everything right. The rhythm, the notes, everything. Now a little bit on the flat side. To battle flatness, just try pressing harder across the board. Sometimes I tell people, if you just press harder across the board, everything's going to come up. Okay. Because you're close. Just a little flat. Other than that, excellent. Very good. Okay. okay, guys, let's take the grinder to it. Okay. Ready? And... so cheerful that time I'm, I'm feeling like it's going pretty good so now shall we try right from the top any reservations or problems before we do that okay let's do it helmets on guns up let's do it like I said anchor them to them two notes ready and
that was Miss Shepherd there. And I thought that it went into Miss Shepherd quite nicely. So I think we'll keep it like that. That was just really nice. Everybody liking that change, that transition? Great, cool. Okay, so that so we worked on tonight Big John and the Miss Shepherd, and now we have King George. And so next time we're gonna work on Miss Lyle. Okay, so we're gonna work on Miss Lyle's reel. And as long as I can find it in here, I should wait, just hold on. I should see if it's in here. I don't know if it is. I thought it was. I'll, I can find a copy of it if it's not, but I'll just double check. Reels. No, it's not in here. Okay, so I'll have to find a copy of it somewhere. But let me play it for you in the meantime. And if you're looking at the Strass Bay, at, at the... Uh, Miss Lyle Strass Bay that's in Sandy's book. I want you to listen to the reel. I, mean, I guess we can learn both. But I want you to listen to the reel and look at the Strass Bay and you'll see how they're very, very similar. Okay. because I think that was the one. Yeah. Bay. Um, we'll get both, but this is such great practice in playing high, up in the high end of the fiddle. And there's so many dangers playing high. There's a few things. First of all, when you're up high with the high B and the high A, if you're a little bit out of tune, it's glaringly apparent. The higher you go up the register, a little tiny bit of flatness is really going to be sort of loud in your ear. I don't know why that is. It just has to do with your ear and the way it hears things. But there's two things about it. First of all, like I said, very apparent if you're a little out of tune. The other things are, the other thing is the difference between the notes, the higher you get, is very small. You have to prize them apart from each other. Let me show you. Here's the, here's a B. Hi, well, let me show, turn my tuner back on so I don't, don't lie to anybody. So here's my high B. Here's the B flat. Here's the B. Not much of a difference there. Here's the C. Here's the B. Again, they're, they're very close. And so your ear has to work hard to pull them apart from each other. So that's why it's such good practice to play up there. And when we're doing our A scale, we'll pay special attention to that and see if we can really, and we'll add the high B 
We'll try that next time. You can try that at home too. Add the high B to your A major scale and see if we can get more used to the notes up there and zeroed in on them, okay? And we'll learn Miss Lyle Strass Bay next time. Righty-o. That was a good workout, guys. Thank you very much. No problem. Thank you. We'll Thanks. see everybody. Bye, everybody. Yes. And uh, don't forget, don't, don't forget to remind me if I forget to post anything, okay? Appreciate it. Thanks. Okay, thanks. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.